to make the soundboard I had intended to use spruce as I'd read that it was a good tonal wood and I had some stored in my secret wood storage area behind my sofa. But after looking through the pieces I had I wasn't particularly happy with the quality of it. It had quite a few knots and it didn't have a very tight grain. At the start of the project I vowed that I'd only use wood that I had already so I looked at what else I had in the workshop and found a nice piece of pine which had really straight, quite tight grain with no knots. Seeing as pine is pretty similar to spruce anyway, I figured I'd give that a try. I chopped off a piece with a handsaw and then squared off the edges on the table saw. The piece had a slight bow to it, so I straightened it up on the jointer. I'd need two very thin pieces to make the soundboard. I made several passes on the table saw, raising the blade each time. And then cut out the middle section on the band saw. Then I jointed the face of the pine again to get it flat so that I could then cut a second slice in the same way. Then I ran both slices through the thicknesser a few times with the final pass set at its minimum thickness to clean up the edges that I just cut and make everything perfectly straight. The pieces looked really good once they were cleaned up. Next I wanted to plane the edges with a hand plane so that I could get a nice straight glue joint between the two pieces. I tested the joint was straight by holding the pieces together with a light shining behind to highlight any gaps. Eventually I got it straight enough. I used some cling film to minimise glue mess on top of a straight piece of melamine for the glue up. Rather than using clamps on these flimsy pieces of wood to avoid breaking anything, I just applied pressure to the joint by hand before nailing it down to secure the joint nice and tight. The wood started to bow at the joint in the middle because of the pressure, so I added more nails to keep the piece flat. The nail holes here won't be a problem later on as they were right on the edge so they'll be on the waist pieces rather than the finished soundboard. I used a cabinet scraper to clean up the glue while it was still wet. I left it for a day and then I could remove the clamps and the nails. And then I sanded everything using a 120 grit paper on my random orbit sander. I drill a sound hole in the soundboard later on in the project. I began assembling the body by first laying out all the pieces using my ruler placed in the centre as a guide to keep everything as straight and even as possible. I marked up the shape of the sides on the neck block by eye and then cut the shape out on the bandsaw. I could then glue up the first side piece by laying everything out again on top of the soundboard piece which was acting as a spacer. That piece wasn't getting glued on yet. I added a clamp to hold the neck down flat to the worktop and then added wood glue to the side piece and clamped it to the neck block. I used a couple of bits of scrap to clamp down the back of the side piece just to keep everything straight while the glue dried. To glue the next side piece, I realised I really didn't have anywhere to clamp it to, as the first side piece was kind of in the way, so my workaround for this was to screw on a sacrificial scrap of wood, which I'd cut at a 45 degree angle on directly to the neck block. I could then use this block to support the clamp and get a tight joint.
Once the glue had dried, I just unscrewed the scrap block of wood and threw it away. It had done its job nicely. With the two sides glued up, I then wanted to cut out the shape of the dovetail and the soundboard so that it would sit flush with the neck. So I marked it up and then cut out the shape on the bandsaw. Then it was time to attach the soundboard to the neck block, so I applied glue and then placed it with the front of the soundboard facing down onto the worktop, again to keep everything flush with the neck. I used a ruler again to make sure that the centre of the soundboard was as parallel to the neck as possible. I clamped down the neck again and the neck block too. I then marked up on the inside where the sound hole would later be placed. I did this just so that I could decide where to place some reinforcing ribs to the inside of the soundboard. I marked up where the ribs could be placed and then cut some scraps of pine to size on the bandsaw. These were glued to the inside of the soundboard. And weighed down with a couple of bricks to get a tight joint. When the glue had dried, I then shaped the end of each rib with a chisel. Next I wanted to make some kerfing to use to attach the soundboard to the sides. I did this on the cross cut sled on my table saw. I made the cuts by eye just by moving it over roughly 5mm each time. The idea behind this is that you make multiple cuts about 3 quarters of the way through the material and the cuts which are the thickness of the blade's kerf allow the piece to bend quite nicely to the shape of the ukulele body. This makes extra gluing surface to make the body stronger than it would be just by gluing the thin side pieces to the soundboard. I then marked up from the centre line of the soundboard where I wanted the sides to be positioned so that they were equal. Then I added glue. added the kerfing lined it up with the mark I'd made and clamped it all down when the glue had dried I could cut off some of the excess material from the soundboard on the bandsaw Then I sanded it flush with the sides. Then I gave the front of the soundboard a sanding too. Next I could make some corner posts that would strengthen the back corners of the body. I just used scrap pieces of mahogany which I shaped on the belt sander. You can see that my finger lost a battle with a chisel in this clip. The amount of blood on show here does make it look worse than it actually was. Next I marked up where the sound hole would be using a compass. The largest hole saw bit that I had was I think 54mm 
which was a little on the small side for a sound hole, but I used it anyway. I thought about using a jigsaw to cut the hole, but I didn't want to run the risk of the vibrations on this thin material, even with the reinforcing ribs attached. So the sound hole is a little bit on the small side. I drilled from both sides to minimise tear out and get a nice clean cut. Then I sanded the hole. I used a round piece of wood wrapped in some 80 grit paper 